Hi, I'm Janet Fielding. I played Tegan in Doctor Who. The five-ish uh, fangirls have a good time. The tangents of Squee continue all the way to episode 83 of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. I didn't set out to destroy the world, Mulder. People did. Welcome, everyone, to this week's episode of the Five-ish Fangirls podcast. So glad you could join us. Let's start off like we do every week by going on the virtual table and see who joined us this week. This is Christy in Salt Lake City. This is Holly from Wisconsin. This is Mitch in Kitchener, Ontario. And this is Rachel in Indianapolis, Indiana. Hello, everyone. You almost forgot, didn't you, Chrissy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I might have, but I got it just in time. I paused. <laughs> there was a pause. <laughs> I, I, well, I had to, well, remember what I said earlier when I took a nap and I couldn't remember my name? I'm still kind of struggling through that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you only need to know your first name. I know your last name changed, but you're not using that here. So, Dear, dear listener, I took a nap earlier. <laughs> no, no, that, that is true. Yes, dear listener, I took a nap earlier today and I'm still kind of in a brain fog. <laughs> so that's what I'm blaming it on. I knew what order we were going in. Yeah. <laughs> Hey everybody, how's it going? Yeah. <laughs> we're, good, we're we're here ish again. But that's okay. So Brittany says that's hi. Your format. Yep. Uh, so let's uh back to our regular format of news and then something else. <laughs> so let's jump into new not a whole lot of news but some of our news has a lot of, if you look at, if you can see our notes some of our news has a lot of text <laughs> yeah and, and believe us we will have plenty to say about this text yes uh, yeah yeah the, the soap boxes are coming out just be forewarned yeah. well on my it, okay i haven't tried this anyway yet <laughs> that's okay the only the only thing that hasn't okay. been taken is some convention news you don't have to do it if you don't want to yeah. I, 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 let me take a look first. Okay. Well, first okay. things first. I, I, you do that, and we'll get to our first. Disorganized <laughs> right now. Sorry. That's all right. It happens. Yeah, it happens. So apparently, February is a very busy month. I didn't know that. It's that extra day. It's thrown everybody off. I think so. Tomorrow is going to be very weird. As we're recording this, because tomorrow happens to be leap day, and it's going to be very weird. Mm -hmm. so. We didn't well, have a February 29th last year, no. and we won't have one next year. <laughs> okay, anyway, proceed with the news. Proceed with friends. the news while Mitch is getting herself ready here. We'll get to the first piece of news, some 10 o'clock news. And this this almost is 10 o'clock news, because this happened this morning, unfortunately. Um, you may not know him by name unless you're... A big like Disney historian, but um, Disney legend, because that's really the best title for him. Uh, Jack Lindquist uh, passed away actually this morning as we were recording this. Um, he actually um, started working at Disneyland in 1955. So when Disneyland first opened 60 years ago. Um, and he became the director of marketing in 1965. Um, and then he worked, uh, on the marketing for Walt Disney World and eventually, um, served, uh, worked in marketing for all of the parks, including Tokyo Disneyland and Disneyland Paris. And he was actually the president of Disneyland, um, at one point. Wow. Um, and he also helped, um, he worked with Walt in developing the Ambassador Program, which has been a long-running um, program um, for uh, the Disney uh, company. Um, so, um, and then he's, he's just, a, he's been with, literally been with, you know, the Disney parks since they opened in one capacity or another worked with Walt um, and then continued to work and help continue Walt's legacy after Walt passed um, and is um, like I said to, to the people that know the Disney parks history and those involved obviously everybody knows Walt and his brother Roy mm -hmm. but it's people like Jack Lindquist um, and others that were part of you know the the group 
that helped make sure that the parks got off the ground and became what they are today. Um, and he is um, honored with several windows on Main Street. Pick a park. He's got a window. Don't ask me off the top of my head which ones are his at which park. Um, but he is, um, he'll definitely be missed um, as a, a staple in the Disney uh, hierarchy, I guess. Now, now, okay, when I when I saw this news, I didn't recognize his name immediately, but then I started reading the details, and I may be getting this wrong, but uh, a couple months ago, uh, Lou Mangiello, um, WDW Radio Podcast, had an interview with somebody who was like a big wig at Disneyland and wrote a book about... Well, Lou's, about Lou's things, interviewed can, several people that have been big wigs. I know, but I'm trying to think if this is the Dis- one I remember, and I cannot remember. I, don't, I should just go back and look at on Lou's website. I don't but I'm like, think is this Lou... Is this Lou interview? I don't think so. Okay, I don't not. think Lou ever got to interview Jack Lindquist. So. Okay, maybe it was somebody else. Yeah. Never mind then, because yeah. I was like, oh, if that's the same guy, I'm like suddenly sad, because Lou talked to him not that long ago. But if it's not, then... Ignore me. Yeah, I don't think so. But you know, I'm but, also but behind on listening. Sad. It's still I'm, sad. Also, I'm also behind on listening to Lou's podcast. So again, I could be wrong, but I don't believe so. Not or I don't think Jack ever, or Lou okay, ever got to interview him on the podcast. Okay. But again, I could be wrong. If Lou has, you know, if, well, we'll find we'll find that particular podcast episode and we'll link it in the show notes. So. I'm looking it up right now because Lou, Lou has done me. way more episodes of, than his podcast than we have, so I can't remember them yeah. <laughs> as much as I would like to. Yeah, it was like in September, October. <laughs> yeah. I think you may that's be thinking thing, of but... Jack Kirby. I think that's who mm-hmm. Lou has interviewed. Maybe. I will recently, look it up and I will I see think. if I remember. Yeah. But it just, it just, something clicked. And but maybe it clicked wrong, yeah. which is entirely possible. Maybe. Anyway, but yes, this is this this is kind of well, especially like hearing that this guy he worked with Walt Disney, and you know obviously Walt Disney's been gone for quite a many number of of decades by mm-hmm. now. But it's like it's kind of sad when you're like, oh, he's someone who actually knew Walt Disney personally, and it kind of is kind of kind of makes kind of makes you sad that you know yeah. we're losing all these people. I mean, obviously. You know that's that's just the nature the nature of time passing, but yeah, it's still sad. Yeah, it's just it's the the num you know it's kind of like you know the number of people still alive that have worked with Walt. It's kind of like the number of people that are still alive that were in the first beginnings of Doctor Who. It's kind of the same thing. It's like your numbers keep shrinking. Don't do that. But it's like we're, we're losing them and we don't want to. Yeah, but it's just. Obviously, our hearts go out to his family and his friends and everyone that ever worked with him at, at Disney, which is a lot of people. <laughs> so he will be um, missed. Uh, oh, by everyone. it was it was Lee Cockerell Lee that Cockerell. I was thinking of. There we go. Yes, that was is from Executive VP of Walt Disney World yes. Operations, which Lee That's has his I own. Lee has his own podcast. Which is quite interesting. Ah, uh, okay. If anyone okay. wants to check that out. Anyway, I, that's note. where I got my wires crossed. Yeah. <laughs> so, I'm sure Lou will have something to say, probably, about oh, uh, yes. his his passing when he does his uh, live broadcast on Wednesday evening, as he wants to mm-hmm. do. So. Anyway, now that we got the sad bits out of, out of the way... Moving on. So, Mitch, are you, uh, <laughs> are you prepared now? Are you? Um, yes, and I can take the convention news, okay. which includes Peter Capaldi making his first con appearance. Mm-hmm. At Fan Expo at Dallas. At Fan Expo Dallas. Yeah. I guess, I guess this should be first con appearance brackets that's not like a Doctor Who tour thing. Like Close bracket. Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. yeah. First general convention appearance. Yes. Yep. So, and he will be there with Jenna? 
and Michelle Gomez. Michelle Gomez. So that should be interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you throw Michelle Gomez in the mix, it's going to be interesting. <laughs> oh yes, oh yes. So, yeah. any anyone attending Fan Expo Dallas, I'm very jealous. So, but hopefully that means maybe enjoy, things enjoy for, those lines. Yeah. Jeez. Well, ho <laughs> hopefully that means potential con, con appearances for potentially, you know. Ones near us, or Peter, at some point. Well, I mean, way. he's uh, appearing at one fan expo. Maybe he'll appear at others, like the one I go to. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gotta, because the way the way I understand, like fan expo works, it's like a you know a, a, a like almost a franchise of conventions well, it, at different places, and so they have contracts with all. It's like fan expo, wizard, wizard world. Yeah, wizard world's another one that does that. Yeah, and that kind of thing. So fingers crossed that this means that Peter Capaldi has got a, like a contract or whatever with Fan Expo, and that he's going to come to Fan Expo Canada in the near future. That would be exciting. That would be very exciting. <laughs> <laughs> the possibilities. <laughs> For now, and, if anyone if uh, anyone happens to attend Fan Expo Dallas and, and gets to see Peter Capaldi and wants to send us any sort of feedback about it, please do. <laughs> please do. Yes, yes. We'll, we'll we'll appreciate any and all <laughs> comments. Yep. And and moving on, some good news for our brother podcast. Mm -hmm. Time it. Two is bringing in Davros for some murder mystery fun. So there's going to be a murder mystery dinner party with Terry Malloy at next uh, time, Eddie. Which I read it on Neat. the website and it sounds so cool and I w kind of wish I was going. <laughs> First of all, Terry Malloy is an awesome dude. <laughs> He's fun to talk to to begin with, but the, this, they're doing this whole murder mystery dinner thing. It's a separate ticketed event, so you have to you have to to buy. You have to be attending Time Eddie too already to be able to go. But uh, but just the whole thing, and it's like they're, yeah. they they created characters with different species and from <laughs> Doctor Who, and you can dress up if you want and. Uh, it sounds awesome. And they said that more more than likely, they know for sure Terry Malloy is going to be participating. Others might. They have said that Peter Davison is not. Personally, I think they're just saying that. <laughs> Meanwhile, Chrissy's going, dang it, I wish I was going. No, 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 no. I get Peter Davison at Fan X. I know, so but I'm you, good. But you don't get like, Peter okay, Davison at a potential murder mystery dinner. Well, true. Okay, yeah. But <laughs> anyway, all that. Let, let, let me. Speaking of, let me just throw that little bit of news because it's not actually on the list. Fan X is actually doing a separate Doctor Who experience panel. It's going to have Matt Smith, uh, Alex Kingston, Peter Davison, and Sylvester McCoy, and it's a separate ticketed event. I still am not decided if I'm going to be able to go to that because I don't know when it is, but that's a little bit of news. I don't think the tickets have gone on sale. I just know that that is going to be a thing soon, but yeah, they, they've got, you know, about a month, well, less than a month now till Fanix. So in Salt Lake. So anyway, I will keep people posted on that and see how things go from there. <laughs> Anyway, I just want to throw that in there since we were talking conventions and Peter yeah. Davison and, and stuff. But yes, I am going to be getting his autograph come hell or high water. <laughs> I'm, and when I see I'm him almost, in less than two weeks, I will tell him to look out for you. <laughs> yes. I have a co costume ready and everything. Of course, I've had my costume ready for like 30 years. <laughs> <laughs> And the only thing is, Jared wants to cosplay as the master. <laughs> so he found out the fifth doctor was going to be there. He knew I had a costume. But he's like, what could I cosplay that would work? And I'm like, the master. <laughs> well, so he does. That, I don't know what that says about, about 
Well, Jared yeah, does have facial Masters. hair, so you know he could do Ainley. Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's that's what I was thinking. I was like, well, none of the none of the, none of the companions would work, but the the ma- yeah, like the master definitely. And and like my my fifth Doctor cosplay is is a, a fem five, so draw your own conclusions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure there's some fan fiction there. <laughs> oh, I'm sure there that. is. <laughs> I don't go to that side of the It's pretty, sometimes it can get a little scary. Not all the time, but a lot of Dr. Master fan fiction. Yeah. Yes. It it gets interesting. It it does. Read at your your own discretion. (laughs) Read at your risk. Yeah. Your discretion is advised. They they do put ratings on them for a reason. Yes, they do. Pay attention to the ratings and any warnings in the summary yep mm-hmm. anyway <laughs> anyway speaking of doctor who yes <clears throat> so yeah. box is at the ready my friends <laughs> i got mine ready okay even so though this really did affect that... me anyway but still. well no but it's just annoying yes okay so remember how like weeks ago they had that big news like no, Doctor Who is leaving streaming all streaming services because BBC doesn't want to play ball with anybody, and yeah, they're just they're just ruining. They're 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 not they're not team players. Well, anyway, so there was like one day. What day was it? I don't remember, but it was this past week. There was one day, and Nerdist had so it was from Nerdist. So we're like, okay, this is legit, and a couple other news. Uh, geek news sites picked it up was that Amazon Prime had tweeted out that, hey, we're getting Doctor Who seasons one through nine on streaming. Yay, rejoice. And I was like, well, that's great, except I don't have Amazon Prime streaming. And I already have all of Doctor Who seasons one through nine. But considering that we had just gotten word that BBC was taking all their stuff off streaming so they could make their own little special clubhouse of BBC streaming stuff that is totally going to crash and burn because... That's how they, they, they don't understand how, how these things work. Anyway, <clears throat> we're like, okay, well, that, that's something. And, you know, some people who want to get into, they want to get into Doctor Who and, and, you know, if you've got an Amazon Prime account, great. That, that's wonderful. That's good news. Maybe this will open up some possibilities. Then the very next day. You have possibilities for casual discussion yes. of Doctor Who. Mm. Yeah. Which I mean, and that's. The removal of it from every other streaming service. Yes, I mean, I mean, people have Amazon Prime accounts, and that's what they watch instead of Netflix or Hulu, and that's great. So, like, yay, maybe I'll get new fans. Well, on the very next day, Amazon Prime retracted that statement, even though it was from their official Twitter account and everything. And they said, "Uh, no, just kidding. We're not actually getting it because I don't know why we said that." <laughs> I'm just like. So anyway, so like our, our, our link, our, our, our news um, that we'll have a link for in the show notes, the, the article we're getting this information from is techtimes.com. Um, and it said, it said that uh, uh, Amazon released its list of movies coming to the service in March. Doctor Who was, noticed, was absent from that list. So it's likely that Amazon jumped the gun in tweeting about Doctor Who. And, and they said, you know, maybe they want to save it for a later announcement because that would be that would mean it has exclusive streaming rights since nobody else has it, or the the or the um, um whatever it's called the 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 contract or the details weren't finalized yet. But they also put together a video featuring like a like a promo video of their offerings featuring Doctor Who. So who the heck knows? Um. But yeah, it's still it. It just brings up it. Just it just reopens that very fresh wound of there's no more Doctor Who streaming legally anywhere in the U.S. It's really annoying. Yeah, Uh, in the U.S. (laughs) On the U.S. In the U.S. Yes. Yeah. Well, Canada is apparently as of this this summer Mm -hmm. is it's going to be a Crave TV exclusive Doctor Who streaming. Like no more. (laughs) It's not going to be Netflix or Show Me. Or anything, it's just gonna be on Crave TV, and so what the heck is BBC doing? The first eight, the first eight seasons are going off Netflix and Show Me, and season nine is being added this summer, so to Crave TV. Okay, BBC, or, well, you guys, you guys can't hear it, but I'm rolling my eyes right now, <laughs> and they're probably gonna roll out of my head, shaking my fists. 
Yes, and, and, then, and, and the, the, if I had like bracelets I said, on, they'd be clanking. There was an announcement, like it, the, the it's still on Netflix and Show Me for now, mm-hmm. but as of this summer, it's not going to be anymore. And then, so once season nine comes up, comes out like on streaming services it's only going to be on Crave TV and all everything's going to go off the other services up here mm. and then I've been reading conflicting reports too about this streaming service for the BBC it's like Doctor Who's going to be in it and but then I've also read one that said Doctor Who's not going to be in it so it's just like okay let's make up our mind here is it or isn't it yeah really oh yeah well then, earlier I mean, today, Doctor Who is going to be in it. There's not a lot of people that are going to like. If people aren't going to be able to like casually discover it on the BBC well, no. streaming service because they're not going to be subscribed well, to the BBC. Well, this is service they yeah. are Netflix. Yeah. Okay, this this is the dumb thing, and I was actually kind of discussing this with my mother-in-law and brother-in-law earlier today because my mother-in-law was she was. Anyway, we were talking about something else. She got spoiled on Face the Raven before she wanted to be. Anyway, um, so we were talking about this, and I brought this up because they were watching it on Netflix, but now it's gone. And I was explaining to them what happened. And, and like, you know, my in-laws, they're all big Star Trek people. And they're like, well, we're going to – because they're going to get the CBS streaming thing so they can watch the new Star Trek when it comes out. Or they might uh, – my brother-in-law might already have it. I don't know. Um but we're all like, okay, yeah, some people are going to specifically buy the BBC streaming thing. Because we're comparing BBC and CBS, and which I did before when we discussed this on the podcast. But it's like, okay, that's not a very big number, you know, a, a big contingent of the population mm-hmm. who's going to pay for this specifically. Whereas people were buying, were, were paying for Netflix because there's such a wide variety of stuff on Netflix. And you can, you know, discover random things that you wouldn't know before but with the bbc thing it's like you're not going to get that many people buying that because not everybody's just going to randomly oh i'm going to buy this and then maybe just casually discover things unless you're already watching like doctor who and sherlock and things which yes that's a lot of people but probably not enough to sustain the you know the, the type of revenue you need to keep this streaming service going and that's the problem i have with bbc doing this and this is why this is why bbc this is not going to work Mm-hmm. I don't think it's going to work. I I will gladly be proven wrong. If it's if I'm wrong, then great. Then you found a, a you found a, a recipe for success. But the way streaming is now, like Hulu and Netflix and Amazon Prime, what sells them is like look at all these different things we have from all these different companies, and you just have to pay you know eight twelve bucks whatever a month or you know ninety nine dollars a year to have this this streaming service and look at all these great things you get but it only works if they get a lot of these things and it's profitable for all these different companies but if they but if all these companies take and say well you know like cbs well we're going to take our stuff and put it on our our own thing and charge people 12 bucks and bbc is going to do the same thing and hbo well it's more with hbo and it's like, no, guys, you're missing the point of why the streaming the streaming services work. If you all pull, pull it together and lots of people pay for it, then you all get a cut of that money, mm-hmm. which is going to be a lot more than if you struck out on your own. Yeah. And that's what they don't get. And that's why this is just not going to work. Yeah. Because, I mean, if, you, if, what, if, you, if you're loyal to a lot of shows and they're on different networks, you know... Eight bucks here, twelve bucks there. Before you know it, you're paying what you would pay for cable. You might as well just exactly. get cable and a DVR and record when your show is on. And if you're and not home to watch, to watch I it, get to watch football games live. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like you're missing. This is why people like streaming because they can just pay the eight bucks and say, hey, "I don't need to pay for cable anymore." Exactly. Woo-hoo. But exactly. you're defeating the purpose, and that that tick that ticks yeah. people off and the variety is you get like you said people get to watch stuff that they normally might not i i will say i'm a perfect example of that if it was not for doctor who being on netflix i would not be a doctor who fan because that's where i started watching it yeah and like and that's and then that's where you get people is like you say okay now i found doctor who on netflix well you know what else can i find you know, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I'll go buy the DVDs or you know classic series. I'll go buy those. But now we there's a bunch of the classic series 
the DVDs that aren't available anymore. So like you shot yourself in the foot there too. Mm-hmm. So, you know, BBC, your business model sucks. Yes. Whatever your, whatever business advice you're getting, stop it. <laughs> Ignore that. You're losing. This is why you have no funding. Because you're an idiot. <laughs> or you're a bunch of idiots. <laughs> pudding heads. Yes. Pudding head. Yes. <laughs> A whole lot of you are putting heads. Anyway. Oh my! Careful, Chris. You're gonna fall oh, off your soapbox. I I just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, that soapbox is tipping over. And I'm, <laughs> I'm getting very well. And, and well, the thing is, I was discussing this earlier when we were visiting family, and yeah, oh, it was so dumb. But it's like it's like you're not gonna get new you're not gonna get new customers and new fans if you just keep your own little oh we're gonna go hide in the corner with ours and the only people who can find us are the people who already know we're here. No, you want to expand your customer base. Yeah. You have to go to them and show look what we have. Mm-hmm. Come to us and you know get them that way. You can't just take your take your toys and hide them. <sighs> <sighs> It's like a soap opera. The saga will continue. Oh, it's... Mm-hmm. Yes. Stay tuned till next time as there there will be there will on be more the streaming drama, sure. as like as the streaming service turns. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. Or buffers. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's it. Buffers. <laughs> I like that. And, and, you know, and, and I'm calling out BBC on this because we we're talking Doctor Who specifically, but this is true for any channel, mm-hmm. a, a, any channel at all. It's like anyone who wants to try this, it's like, ugh. With a few exceptions yeah. like HBO where you would have to pay a pre- well, extra yeah. on top of your cable bill already to be able to. Well, HBO is always, that's always kind of been their thing and somehow it works for them, but that's because they're, they're a little bit different. Yeah. I think it's because they were, you know, the first ones to do it. So, but anyone trying to do it brand new and where it's BBC, where there's such a niche market, Mm -hmm. it's like, you guys aren't, you guys aren't on the level of HBO. I'm sorry. I don't know what you're thinking, but you're not. I mean, if they, if they think they're going to get me to watch other, you know, by watching Doctor Who on their service that I'll somehow discover. I mean, there's, I guess the odds are I could discover something else where I'm like, Ooh, but I mean, I know what few BBC programming that's like mainstream, well, I guess things like, you know, Downton Abbey or I don't know if that's BBC well, and call well, the midwife. Well, it's like, I've tried to watch those shows. I don't like them. <laughs> like I well, like I, my I doctor. Mean, Downton Abbey is, is ITV, but it's on PBS. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. For free anyway. Like, I like my well, Doctor Who. I like my Sherlock, it. and that's about it from the yeah. BBC. I'm sorry. Yeah. Well, I mean, and Hulu had a ton of BBC programming. Like we'd watch Red Red Dwarf, and mm-hmm. I don't know if that's still on there. I haven't checked. It probably mm-hmm. probably isn't. But I'm like, I was going through Hulu, and I'm like, oh, there's all this period drama that I'm like, oh, I want to watch that. I want to yeah. watch that. I want to watch that. And it's all on Hulu, and it's right there. And I'm like, this is how you get your your customer base. Is you you show them, you know, give them a taste of what you have. On where they already are, you go to where they are, which is on Netflix and Hulu and Amazon. Mm-hmm. So, you know, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> don't give me yeah. No, Red Dwarf's no longer on Hulu. Okay, well. Well. <clears throat> I, guess, I guess they took all their, all their BBC, because there was a lot. Mm-hmm. Of- stuff on Hulu. They had a lot of stuff and it was it was great. Well my guess is if they you know if they pulled you know Dossy license and they just yank the whole thing. So Yeah. It's probably just easier than giving trying to figure out, you know, individual licenses for each particular program. It's like, no, just yank the entire thing. If it has the BBC logo on it, no more. Yeah. Anyway, we'll keep we'll we'll keep you posted to keep ranting as this drama un- continues. To oh unfold. yes. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, so there, there's our soapbox for the day. Amazon Amazon gave it and then they took it away. Yeah. <laughs> I don't even think that's proper grammar, but I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> it's all good. <sighs> Moving on to our next bit of news. <clears throat> 
premise revealed for Marvel's Most Wanted. Uh, this comes from the Nerdist. When Marvel and ABC revealed Marvel's Most Wanted to be the title of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spinoff, starring Adrian Pilecki as Mockingbird and Nick Blood as Lance Hunter, it was assumed that the series would feature the duo as they hunted down superpowered criminals in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but it turns out that Mockingbird and Hunter are the ones being hunted on the show. A description of Marvel's most wanted pilot has been released by ABC, and it implies a serious shakeup for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., while also shedding some light on the role that Dominic Fortune, by, played by Deloitte, excuse me, Deloitte Lindo, will play in the series. Bobby Morales, a.k.a. Mockingbird, and Lance Hunter of Marvel's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., two ex-spies and ex-spouses who are on the run with no friends, no S.H.I.E.L.D., and a long list of enemies looking to claim a bounty on their heads. Able to trust no one but each other, Bobby and Hunter form an uneasy alliance with Dominic Forge and Admiral Hunter with a wealth of resources and even more adversaries who agrees to protect them so long as they help him with his own agenda. These two heroes will help anyone in need, all while trying to uncover the conspiracy that put their own lives in jeopardy. That sounds like it could be very good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is funny, because was it last year or something that they, that we first heard rumors of a, mm-hmm. of a Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. spinoff with, with, with um, Mockingbird and Hunter, and we're like, they're like, nah, it ain't happening. Well, apparently now it's happening. Surprise. Yeah. Hooray. Mm-hmm. And... and- Gleam, gleam from the premise here, what you will about, uh, you know, what this may mean for the the plot for Ages of Shield going forward. Yeah, <laughs> that's what oh, I was dear. thinking when I was reading this. This is like, yeah. hmm. Well, okay, so well, last, I mean, the first season of Shield when they said, "Oh, there's no more Shield. It's just Hydra." Well, like Agents of Shield kept going. Oh, I know. But it's just, you know, why, why are Bobby and Lance on their own? What is going to happen to Coulson and the rest of the crew that they are alone and don't have them? Are they, is something going to happen and they have to go, they have to run for it and Team Coulson gets separated and Bobby and Hunter end up together? Or is something going to happen that we don't know? That's the thing, is you can kind of, like, ooh, the possibilities for plot lines so that, you know, they end up in this circumstance, especially considering where we know the Marvel Cinematic Universe is going as far as Civil War and eventually, you know, Infinity War and all that. So it's just the possibilities, the possibilities. I'm just excited for Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to come back. Really? <laughs> but that's just me. I don't know enough about the, the comics to potentially like, ooh, this is this storyline that they're gonna go with. But yeah. You know. My head can plot, I guess. And Skype decided to crap out on us. All right, this is fun. All right. Hold on a moment, dear listeners. I think it says three participants. I'm like, there should be four. I'm back. <laughs> oh, okay. There you are. What happened? Or you're I back. Know. I have no idea. <laughs> we got I was, diverged for I a was, moment. I was talking and That's you weird. guys were being awfully quiet and I thought maybe you were just having me have my say. <laughs> and then it went, oh, no, ping! No, it went you quiet were, and we're like, where'd you go? <laughs> That was Skype saying, okay, we've already had soapbox time. Move on. <laughs> or it's just Skype being Skype. Take your pick. <laughs> and there we go again. <sighs> they see blinking. They're blinking. What's going on here? I'm telling you. This is the same thing that happened a couple weeks ago when we were discussing the same topic. I'm telling you, it's cursed. <laughs> this topic is cursed. Or something, I don't know. <laughs> okay, and we're back. All I right. hope. <laughs> so, housekeeping for the Traveling the Vortex Doctor Who book club on Goodreads. As you 
Well, as of right now, over, but as of right now, deep time is in the lead with five votes. Doctor has two. Doctor Who Royal Blood and the Doctor Who the Stone Rose have a vote apiece. Big Bang Generation and the Prisoner of the Daleks both have no votes. And don't worry if the book that you had voted for did not make the winner. I will be putting these back in for other months to vote on. So, <laughs> so you have not lost chance. your opportunity okay. to. Exactly. I voted for the Stone Rose because I have it and I have re- I read it. So I was hoping to get an easy. Get it is. Off. It is. It is not. But I guess I'm going out and buying deep time tomorrow. Well, then I guess you get something new. I don't know. <laughs> and there was a comment with um, this one that Deep Time is part of a trilogy. And I had done some research that you can read book, the books in whatever order. Because I read The Big Bang Generation in reverse order. And there really wasn't much of a connecting thread. So we should be good for this. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I wondered Good about that because it was the Glamour Chronicles. I'm like, right. Because I got the Big Bang Generation for Christmas. I'm like, doesn't say if this is book one, book two, whatever. And uh, yeah, so I guess, you know, and I I did some research too and came up with the same answer. So we should be, should be fine. Yeah. Cool. So that's it for housekeeping. Yay. All righty then. Well, let's move on before... The aliens invade or something. Or the magic mushrooms take over. I guess. I'm telling you, this topic is is, is, is cursed or something. Uh, we had this exact same problem. When we I was saying this you know, before I, before we really got cut off, that there's a precedent for this. <laughs> we had nothing but issues when discussing the X-Files last time. So take from that what you will. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But we're back on the X Files <laughs> since the, those last three episodes went by really quickly. Yes, uh, they did. <laughs> yeah, and um, something I meant to mention last time but forgot. I'm glad they went back to the um, the old theme because I didn't like the theme that they uh, like the theme song, like the credits. No, oh, yeah, they went within season nine, but they went back to the old credits. For this season, mm-hmm. and I I really appreciated that. I did, I really didn't like the season nine credits. I don't even think I noticed, but again, I I, I was I <laughs> well, was a I was a with, very casual X Files watcher. So with me having to cram it all inside of like a month, yeah. I, and it, it was a really drastic change for season nine. And I was like, no, no. Yeah. And then I watched the first episode of this new season, season 10, and I was like, oh, good, it's back to the way it was. <laughs> I mean, they added uh, director Skinner. Yeah. But that's, like, it. Yeah. And that, even that's, like, minor compared to the drastic changes they were making towards the end of the original run. Yeah. Well, we're going to see. Were we, we were halfway through the season last time we discussed it, which isn't saying a whole lot because we're only six episodes to begin with. Uh, <laughs> but um, uh, the season is now done. I say done because they left it way open for more. <laughs> but we'll get to that. In a second. Yeah. So, um, the the two episodes before the finale, um, we got a um, uh, I guess a, a Scully centric episode um, with uh, the death of her mother, uh, which was heartbreaking. But at the same time, it was a. I think it was good because it allowed uh, us to really get some, I guess, some more emotional depth out of Scully. 
because yeah. Scully Scully's always been the scientist. She's the doctor. She's the science scientist. She's the you know the the non-believer. The you know the follow follow the rules, follow the science, follow the medicine type person. Um, so we finally got to um, get some. There's that bomb again. Uh, <laughs> call Jack Bauer. Yes, call someone. Uh, um, but, um, you know, and unfortunately that means that, you know, Scully has now lost her, her mother. Um, mm -hmm. We get mentions of uh, her, her siblings. Um, and we get Bill and Sharp. Yeah. Um, and we get to hear one of them via via speakerphone. Um, but it it get it brought up uh, more mentions of uh, Fox and Dana's son. Um, yep. which, you know, again kind of left it less of left us those breadcrumbs thinking, oh, eventually they're gonna find him or at least we're going to see him even if they don't and and that didn't pan out but again we'll get to that uh, <laughs> um, it was a, it was a monster of the week ish episode but uh, you know but uh, it was also more character development for for Scully um, and Fox get got to play you know chase the monster mm. uh, very weird monster. The trash man. Mm -hmm. uh, glad we don't have smell vision yet. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That would have been disgusting. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that was episode four. Uh, and then episode five. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to hear Billy Ray Cyrus ever again. Uh -huh. Okay, so you're gonna have to explain this because I, a confession, I did not watch X Files just because I didn't, and I, I've seen all you guys talking back and forth about it like vaguely with no spoilers, but I don't care. I'm not gonna watch it. So please explain. Can you explain so the Billy Ray Cyrus? The, the idea is, uh, well, uh, or is it too complex? Not really. No, There's not really. Many. Mulder goes on yeah. a on a on a drug trip essentially. Yeah. And he hallucinates, and part of that includes him going and to a club in country life. A trip, I might add, as it was a placebo. Yes. Yeah. Okay. But his hallucination hallucination in included going to a club and country line dancing to achy breaky hearts so that you get and David Duchovny, you know, just doing his his best booty shake. Yeah. Along with Long Gunman and Skinner. Yeah. <laughs> And that's where we get our cameo from the Lone Gunman, which yep, oh, okay, yeah, you know, that that gets them back without having to figure out how to get them back and them not being dead. So, <laughs> but oh, funniest yeah drug hallucination I think I've ever seen. Uh, at least up to a certain point, then it started to turn serious towards the end. Mm -hmm. Um. Which ended up helping them with, um, there, I mean, there weren't necessarily, like, there wasn't, like, a monster of the week. They were dealing with a real-world thing with uh, a terrorist bombing. And the bomber had survived, but he was in a coma. But they wanted to get information from him on who he was working with, because, you know, if he was part of a cell, where were the, you know, where's the rest of the cell, where are they based, that, that sort of thing. And... Um, uh, Mulder, <laughs> Mulder believed that if he took this certain was it mushroom, yeah, it was, it was a certain mushroom <laughs> that that would allow him to get to us like a a trans, a, you know, otherworldly state psychologically, so yeah. that he could communicate with the bomber. <laughs> and Agent Einstein said, like, no way. Yeah. She leaves. He's like, I take that as a maybe. Yeah. And he's like, oh, fox. <laughs> Typical Mulder. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, 
But we did get the introduce, uh, introduction to Agent Miller yeah. <laughs> and Agent Einstein, which are essentially younger versions of Malter and Scully. <laughs> and Scully, yep. <laughs> And then Scully's, you know, come in. Nobody down here except the FBI is most unwanted. And the look Mulder is like, hey, I've been waiting 23 years to I say know. that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so funny. Yeah. So, so funny. Um, um, with the... I don't know anything of the gal playing Einstein, but uh, Agent Miller, Robbie Mel. I... I the guy who plays Einstein was Jilly Kitchen during Miracle Day. Okay, I knew she looked familiar. I thought so too, which is why I looked her up and was like, oh, makes her. sense now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. Now I have to go back and rewatch Miracle Day because I did not recognize her whatsoever. <laughs> Maybe it's the hair. Yeah, she's, she, yeah. she's very different. Mm -hmm. yeah. But uh, that, that brought those characters in, um, and they stick around for the, the finale-ish. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, but yeah, that every, everyone, and everyone I know after seeing that particular episode, they're like, oh my God. Goodness, I'm never gonna be able to hear country music the same and not have visions of David Duchovny shaking it. Yeah. Line dance. Unfortunately, I don't listen to country music all that often, so I won't have that problem. Well, yeah, well, you do have that I, going for there, you. There's but... cer there certain. I, I grew up with country music, and so I, I I've got an ear for it, and I quite quite like it. Although some of the more modern stuff is kind of. Ugh. But that's me. Hey, to each their own. But I don't exactly. listen to country music, so I won't. Oh, no, have... you're fine. I was just, yeah. But Achy Breaky Heart kind of, it got overplayed way too much. And I, yeah. It's not my favorite anyway, so. Me. That and that and Trace Atkins' Honky Tonk for Donka Donk. Yeah. <laughs> Some of his stuff I like. That is not one of them. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. It was it was nice to have that that um, that uh, it was a, it was it kind of it's it's like you know the the way we only have you know six episodes in this season and obviously the the first episode the end episode are deep in mythology X Files mythology you've got some monster of the week but then you have some funny bits in there too um, you know I would I would. As far as humor goes, really, Mulder and Scully meet the were monster, and the bit in Babylon are going to be your funniest <laughs> of the entire season. Um, but it, it kind of helps to have the, the funny bits there um, to kind of ease the tension after after so long, especially considering we get right back into the mythology um, with the the finale, My Struggle Part Two. Or my struggle too, I guess. Which I sat and I was watching it, and I was watching it. I was watching, it, and I wasn't paying attention to like what time it was, so I hadn't occurred. It it wasn't conscious in my head how far into the episode we were. So when it ended, I had to look at my watch. Like, wait, what? Has it been an hour already? I was paying attention to the time, and I'm like. Is this a two-part finale? Because it's it not be. And he got to the end and is like, "Is this a two-part finale?" But nope, it nope. went right. The went, it ran right into the next show at that will show this normally after X Files mm -hmm. on that channel. Mm -hmm. It's like, uh huh? Yeah. Yeah, a lot of people were like that. So like, really? Even I was like, like, really? That's yeah. like I knew I'd seen articles leading into it that you know they wanted they were hoping that this wasn't gonna be one off. We knew they'd said that it was gonna end in a cliffhanger, um, and they plan on making more if and when time permits and all the stars are available and 
you know, to to film and all that. But well, even that still <laughs> older. This is the end. I'm just like, oh come on. Yeah. Are you pulling their leg here a little? Yeah. No. Was like, I I will say that I felt a little a little better though. Um, be, after. I think I even said when we were talking about this a few weeks ago with about the smoking man that I wanted to punch him. And yep. Mulder did. Yep. <laughs> Mulder got to do it for me. The smoking man finally got his butt whooped at least a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> oh, and now we know how he's alive. He's, yeah. he's pieced together, essentially. <laughs> Although the bit when he pulled his face back, I was like, ew. But that's a really yeah. good special effect. But at the same time, it's like, ew. Uh -huh. Like, really good special effect, but ew. <laughs> and I'm really wondering what he had on Reyes to have him help her. I mean, it's been a bit since I've seen season nine, and there's not a whole lot that I can remember but it must be something i don't know maybe and it may be something we haven't seen that's yet that's what so. i'm wondering um yeah i don't know i didn't i i i think i i didn't watch a whole lot of season nine so i didn't even recognize her um to be perfectly honest with you i'm like who is she i don't know who this person is but uh that's okay I'm sure once we get more that we'll we'll find out more, but the the whole mythology head turning that they did in the first episode when we found out that it wasn't necessarily an alien invasion that was coming, it's men, you know, governments using alien technology from aliens that have already visited to use that to gain power, money, whatever that people who have power that shouldn't have it like to do uh, that uh, that there was something coming and we finally get to see the beginnings of that which is that those with the changes to their DNA with the the science went completely over my apparently some of that actually is somewhat accurate science too i read that that what dana was talking about with the chromosome or the protein that she was talking about is like a legit thing that causes like an audio autoimmune disorder so apparently that's a like it's somewhat science fact but not really um but those with the the government was going to start releasing Things like anthrax <laughs> out into the public and start killing off people, and only those who had the the, the extra protein or whatever in their DNA um, would survive. It was uh, it was like picking and choosing who would get to live and carry on the the human race, and of course the smoking man, you know the cigarette smoking man is part of those people who decided to. You know, play God, essentially. Although his justification to Mulder was that, you know, he wasn't necessarily playing God or trying to destroy humanity. That it was, this was an outcome that humanity was already barreling towards. And he was just helping it along. I think his, I think what he said was, I moved up the timetable. Yeah. That alien that the aliens had foreseen this coming and had seen it happen on their own home planets or whatever, and were just helping out. Uh huh. Yeah. What, like Dad was helped create the Daleks. Exactly. Because <laughs> I'm because that's the one. The... Mm -hmm. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah. It change changing humanity in in adjusting adjusting the race. You know. So that it it fits the uh, the the blueprint, I guess that they uh, think will be best to continue the human race. Again, people with power who shouldn't have it. We see this a lot on a lot of TV shows. <laughs> Those with the power are the people who should not have it. <laughs> yeah. 
always a bad idea. But you wouldn't have a plot otherwise, I guess. Uh, so. But as we were leaving it, Scully was trying to use her DNA to come up with a vaccine to save as many people as possible, including Mulder, because apparently Mulder was not one of the chosen ones, even though the smoking man says that he cares for Mulder. You can't see me, but I'm really rolling my eyes. <laughs> Mulder really should have beat him up more. Uh, yeah. But, uh... So... Yeah. And then Scully gets the vaccine, gets to Mulder, realizes he's too far gone, mm -hmm. that the right. vaccine made from her DNA won't help him, and that he needs something from their son, who... Mm -hmm. Essentially, he needs a bone marrow Mulder's transplant. DNA and Mulder's DNA. Yeah. And then a, an alien ship comes in over top of where she is. Mm -hmm. And that's where it ends. Yep. Yep. <laughs> and we're all going, what? What? <laughs> that's where you leave it? The only thing that's kept me from completely freaking out is knowing that x files popular enough that there will be another season yes that that's the only thing that the ratings have been good have been very good apparently uh, <laughs> they've they've got ideas there are no scripts actually written but they've got ideas on where the where this can continue from here it's just a matter of fox saying Yes, make more, and, you know, our stars being available to, to film. Yep. So whether it'll be sooner <laughs> rather than later, we don't know. I mean, they are hoping it's not going to be, like, you know, ten years <laughs> before we get more. <laughs> well, yes, and, you know, with everybody on the whole nostalgic kick of, you know, all, all everything that was old is new again, mm. I'm sure there's something something in the works especially if the ratings were were good yeah mm -hmm. yeah but we're all still kind of more we need more how can you leave us like that yeah. please that's how they that's how they get it to come back well in sure. theory well yeah it doesn't always work that way but well yeah that's very true but yeah it, it it will come back. It's just, a, it's not if, it's when. Mm -hmm. And that's, and, you know, like, like Mitch said, that's the only thing that's keeping me from going, mm -hmm. I give up and throw the TV out the window and that sort of thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Although I feel like, I mean, again, I didn't watch it, but I heard everybody, I heard, I heard the screams of so many when, when the cliffhanger happened. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I figure they wouldn't do that big of a cliffhanger if they didn't already know it was. And they weren't getting another season. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Go around with it, For whatever sure. they're calling it. Yeah. So, you all should be fine. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we keep telling ourselves. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, helps you sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Exactly. So, but what this, I mean, what, what, you know, what, even when we talked about this last time, you know, with the whole idea that it's not an alien invasion, you know, like the, the cigarette smoking man said in the, the first finale, you know, that the, the invasion is coming and there's nothing you can do about it, that this time... It's like, apparently there's still an invasion coming. Whether well, I guess that's the thing is we don't know. Is this an invasion? Is it actually aliens, or is it one of the government created alien vehicles, or vehicles created from alien technology, and that's people instead of aliens? Or is it aliens? It's not necessarily an invasion, but maybe the aliens are coming to help with the eradication of the population. Maybe the aliens decided that they think that the government's using the technology wrong and they're going to try and fix I don't know. That's the thing. Because they've taken the mythology and 
turned it so upside turn it upside down there's so many other you know before when it was aliens are coming there's nothing you can do about it. it's like okay well then that's it there's nothing we can do about it unless they're going to pull an independence day and get will smith involved but i doubt that uh <laughs> <sighs> I, uh, you never know <laughs> we don't know and that's 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 uh i think the biggest thing with our some of these fandoms a lot of these fandoms is they you don't know and there's nothing you can do about it except wait and see <laughs> Wait and see. Wait and see. Those are the... Watch and, watch and find out. Yeah. yeah. Wait and see. There's a th- nasty three-word phrase when it comes to television. Wait and see. And some movies. <laughs> Wait and <True>. see. <sighs> Anywho. I'll get off my soapbox now. Anyone else like to say anything? Holly, you're the X file. You're our X files person. You're the one with the longest history. I know I asked you this last time, but what do you think? Did we lose her? Did I lose you guys again? No, I'm. I can hear I you. Can no? you. No. Holly. 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 Did we lose Holly? Yeah, we lost Holly. Did we lose Holly? Well, apparently Holly doesn't think anything then. <laughs> Well, I'm sure no she does. Shit. Just Skype told her no. Yeah, apparently. <laughs> Skype's been doing that a lot. I'm going to send a strongly worded email to Fox. Dear Fox, please, thank you for bringing the X-Files back, but could you please figure out a way to lift the curse so that we can talk about it <laughs> on Skype without having any issues? <laughs> I'm checking to see if she said anything in Messenger. Like, oh, you're here. Sorry. Yeah, there you are. We thought maybe you'd been abducted. We were talking about, you know, spaceships, and it wouldn't be that far off, I don't think. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, as I was saying, Holly, as the X Files expert, mm-hmm. please give us your two cents. I enjoyed it. <laughs> I mean, I had to go back and rewatch the last three episodes just to, you know, like, did I just see what just happened? And it was great. I wish it could have been a little bit longer. And I'm really, really hoping that the stars align and we get more. If not on TV, at least book, audio format, something. Because it's just like the way they left it. I want more. <laughs> Well, they've done their job, then. Yeah. Yeah. That is true. That is true. Admit you're the you're the you're the newbie. Yes. You're the yes. X Files newbie. <laughs> so other 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 than you know staying off the cliff because you know there's probably more coming. What else do you think? Looking forward to hopefully seeing William next season. Yeah. Because <laughs> they referenced him all season, and you get that one glimpse of him as a baby, and that's pretty much it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, I think at this yeah, point we really yeah. Gold. Mulder and Scully imagining what it would would have been like if they had raised him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But that wasn't the, the, the you know the real William, so that that doesn't, <laughs> no, that was, that doesn't that really was, count. I imagined William. Yeah. yeah. Well. Yeah, I mean, unless they could figure out another way to save save Mulder, they really don't have a choice. They're gonna have to find him. Yeah. Otherwise, Mulder's gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> they they backed themselves into a corner at this point. Yeah. Either bring William in or let Mulder die. But this is the X Files. There's probably a third option, and we just don't, <laughs> sure we don't know what is, it is. But I, I hope they don't go with that. Yeah. Whatever it is. I'm hoping they bring William in. Yeah. Yeah. 
at the very least, I hope they bring I hope they bring him in, and he's able to save Mulder, and Dana can you know finally get her peace in her mind on you know how is he does he hate me does he hate both of us for um you know giving him up that sort of thing i you know i'd like for them to see him i don't necessarily want him to stick around just cuz you know i like Mulder and Scully together i don't necessarily want to see them together as and do the whole parenting thing. Cause I just don't think really I think it fits into the whole X Files thing. I mean, it was nice they had their vi you know their daydreams about what it'd be like, but obviously, more than likely, if they had kept them, their lives would be completely different. They wouldn't be the alien hunters, monster of the week type thing. And I don't necessarily want that dynamic to change. That may just be me. Just I, I think in certain shows, um, you know, ones like this, that throwing a child into it, yes, it changes the dynamic, but I don't necessarily want it to change too much and make it, I hate to quote the ninth doctor, but domestic. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of, it, it's, it, it's kind of weird. Like if you, you know, you're out fighting alien, an alien threat or, or whatever, and then you gotta, you know, get home in time to, take your kid to soccer practice or yeah something it's like i'm sure i'm sure there's some show like i would like a, a brand new show just to be like you know by day we hunt aliens or you no know, by, by night we hunt aliens by day we're a normal family or something like that i'm sure it's been done i just can't think of it right now yeah. <laughs> it's like okay kids you gotta get to school and then mommy and daddy gotta go off and you know fight the, the you know the the, the alien threat it's gonna come kill us or whatever i don't know yeah but then when would you sleep i don't know and that would be something they have to figure out yes they would yeah but i don't think it would necessarily work for the x-files that's just me no no it wouldn't that's why i said you have to come up with something brand new and then that's your premise yeah you can't shoehorn a family life into a into something that's already established like that. Yeah. At least I don't think you can. Yeah. I don't. I, I don't think you can because I mean, if if that if if they, if they thought that that would have worked, they would have kept him. I mean, that's the yeah, whole reason in the story done. they got rid of him in the first place because it didn't really fit their lifestyle. <laughs> they realized that their life was too dangerous and it would put his life in danger, but they weren't necessarily willing to give up their career. So. Off baby William went. So, granted, he's yeah. not a baby anymore, but still, I mean, he's a kid. He'd be, what, 12? Ish? They said 15. 15? Okay, so, he's a teenager. I mean, he's almost an adult. And I'm sure he's got a very, you know, hopefully, he's got a very happy life wherever he is. He ended up with a good family, maybe has brothers and sisters and lots of friends, and maybe plays sports or something, or maybe he's president of the science club. Who knows? I guess we'll find out eventually. <laughs> so, so, but like, like I said, you know, if, if they thought that a child would fit, they would have kept him instead of shipping him off to another family. Yeah. He'll be in for a shock when they do find him and say, "Yeah, <laughs> we're the family that you gave you up when you were a baby. Your father's dying." We need some of your bone marrow, please. Mm -hmm. By the way, they're aliens. I know they're aliens invading, but we'll we'll take care of that once you save your father. <laughs> That's gonna be an interesting conversation. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, I know. <sighs> All righty then. Anything else? Doesn't sound like it. Well, I hate to tempt fate with Skype much longer on this topic. Well, yeah, I guess we should. We should wrap it up. <laughs> Skype's been kind of on tonight. Yeah. But anyway, if you, if you dear listeners out there want to talk X Files and, and drop in, drop in your two cents or anything else we've talked about, Marvel, Once Upon a Time, Doctor Who, 
any of the news segments that we've talked about um, or anything you just want to bring up, please get in contact with us. You can find all of our contact information at the five ish fangirls podcast.blogspot.com. You can also get in touch with us via our Facebook page, and uh, links to all these things are on our on our website. Um, so Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, Pinterest, Instagram, YouTube, uh, iTunes, Patreon, and other things and also our email is fiveishfangirls at gmail.com and we'll read your feedback out and you know we've been and we've been posting a lot of stuff on on facebook you know news and things and just fun little whatevers that we find that we're like hey this looks like fun i'm going to share it on the podcast page and hopefully other people will like it too and i and, and it's odd i found out because my sister's been following up uh, the, the podcast for a while but then i found i found that my mom liked her facebook page too i don't know that she listens to the podcast but i saw that she liked something that we shared uh on our on our page and i was like huh okay hi mom <laughs> <laughs> so yay yay for that hi chrissy's mom <laughs> hi <laughs> Was that before or after your mom got to meet Brittany at your wedding? I, I, just, I just noticed it today. It was something, I think it was the um, Jack Lindquist uh, yeah. news. It, I, I saw my sister's name and my mom's name on our, on our podcast Facebook page, and I'm like, hmm. okay. okay. Maybe, your, maybe, so, your, maybe your mom realized it wasn't necessarily a bad thing now that she got to meet Brittany. She's like, oh, they're not all axe murderers. Great. <laughs> Not all these crazy weirdos that you know that, that my daughter talks to online that I have no idea who they are. Well, we are crazy weirdos, but we're not axe murderers. <laughs> yeah, yeah, not, not not like you're not dangerous, crazy weirdos. I should I should yeah. clarify that. We're, fa- we're fangirls. That's a completely different type of crazy weirdo. Yes, you can take it. <laughs> like, mom, like mom, you've come you've come a long way to, from 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 not letting me watch anime well she let me watch anime but i had to buy it myself <laughs> she wouldn't pay for it because <laughs> she thought it was something not very nice which given the time i can understand it was not that well known but anyway that's neither here nor there past is in the past yep <laughs> to quote frozen <sighs> yes yep. oh i watched i i tangent i watched the this the disneyland 60th special it was on hulu and i was like oh i want to go back to disneyland <laughs> i haven't Actually, seen kind of it yet cry a little bit <laughs> oh you haven't oh okay no, it's amazing i think my mom recorded yeah, it on a dvr but i haven't yeah i think my mom recorded it on yeah, a that, DVR, that's what but i haven't seen it and elton john has still got it <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, Adina Menzel sings Let It Go from California Adventure. That's what made me think of it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll watch it. Anyway. Anyway. So, all right. Well, with that, I guess we shall <laughs> sign off for this week before Skype signs us off for us. <clears throat> yep. <laughs> all right. Well, friends, this is Chrissy in Salt Lake City saying goodnight. This is Live Wednesday. Good evening. Just saying goodnight from Ontario. And this is Rachel from Indianapolis, Indiana. I actually have to do some editing this time. <laughs> <laughs> Earn your paycheck. Wait. Yes. <laughs> I don't get paid. <laughs> oh, well. <laughs>to the five-ish fangirls podcast and in all movies books games and other forms of media mentioned are owned and operated by the respective copyright holders no copyright infringement is intended or implied